One thing Google successfully does every year is have people be divisive on which of their new phones to get. On one hand, we have the smaller Pixel 9, which is a cheaper price, a smaller form factor, but it's not the best in hardware and software. Then there's this, the Pixel 9 Pro XL that has people talking, has people finally put it in the flagship bracket with the iPhone 15 Pro Max or even the 16 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra. But after all the hype, has Google finally succeeded with the Pixel 9 Pro XL? These are the questions I am hoping to address. So let's get into it. Hey guys, my name is Coinsola, but you can call me KJ. So I want to quickly cover the hardware improvements between this and the older Pixel 8 Pro and the differences with the smaller Pixel 9. One thing I have to give credit to Google for is making those small incremental changes to their designs to give it a fresh look. I have said this time and time again, I believe this is one of Google's positives every single year. They did a great job making the Pixel 9 Pro and the 9 Pro XL ergonomically friendly, or should I say friendlier, than the Pixel 8 Pro. The square-shaped design, the flat display sits well within the palm of my hands, and there is no fear that this will fall off at any given time, so that is great if you do not like putting a case on your phone. Although, if you do wear sweatpants or tracksuits, the phone slides out very easily, so maybe you do need a case after all. It weighs 221 grams, so it's not the heaviest phone around. The back of the phone is glass, giving it more durability than the Pixel 8 Pro, while also having a soft matte finish. Also new is a redesign of the camera placement. It's thicker, more prominent, and it doesn't rock on a table, so you can use your phone while just studying and whatnot and not have to worry about it moving every now and then. But after about a month, there are scratches on my Pixel 9 Pro XL, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it has a few micro scratches on the camera and the aluminum rails. So yeah, if you do hate scratches, then you definitely need a case on your phone. The right side has the power button and the volume button, which is usual. And at the bottom is a USB type C charger that supports up to 45 watt when charging, but we'll get to the battery specs very soon. And oh, I can't wait to get this off because you guys were cooking me in the comments a few weeks ago about charging. So stay tuned for that. The display this year on the 9 Pro XL has moved up a level when it comes to how bright the phone can get. This is a 6.8 inch screen with an adjustable refresh rate that goes from 1 to 120 with peak brightness as high as 3000 nits. Yeah, 3000 nits is really high, easily making this one of the brightest phones in the industry. Canada's weather right now is as high as 30 degrees, so when the sun is out, my phone is also out. It's so much fun having to use this and not having to squint my eyes every time I want to use my phone when I'm walking or running outside of my apartment. And I think the biggest improvement has to be how I unlock the phone. The 9 Pro XL now has an ultrasonic fingerprint reader, which means you get an easier, faster, and more secure way to unlock your phone. You have no idea how long I have been waiting for this, probably since like the Pixel 6 Pro, if I remember. So yeah, it's been a while and I'm having a very pleasant experience so far. The 120 Hz display is really good. Everything is snappy. It feels objectively faster than the Pixel A Pro and that is thanks to the Tensor G4. But you know what's faster? Pressing that subscribe button. The goal for the year is 30,000 subs. So roughly I have about 8,000 subs to go. So subscribe, like this video and I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, let's talk about the battery life for a second. The battery capacity on the 9 Pro XL is slightly higher than the Pixel 8 Pro. It is 5,060 mAh of battery and will easily get you through the day and probably more depending on how you use your phone. In the last month, it's been good. I get maybe six hours of screen on time on a minimum and eight hours on a very good day. It also has fast charging with the use of a 45 watt charger. So initially, when I did a video on this phone a couple weeks ago, I said the charging speed isn't what Google advertised and that is zero to 70% in 30 minutes. You lot cooked me and said, I didn't use the right charger or I'm trying to bash the Pixel phones or I just don't know what I'm saying. Mind you, I was using the 65 watt charger from the M3 MacBook Pro. So I decided to take a step back and order the 45 watt charger specifically from Google. You know, the one they advertised, the one that says it goes from zero to 70% in 30 minutes. But you know what happened? Absolutely nothing. 
With Google's 45 watt charger, it went from zero to 30% in about an hour. And I went on different Reddit threads. I spoke to some of you in the comments and I wasn't the only one. Some said you need your phone to drop to 1% before the fast charging starts kicking in. And I find that utterly ridiculous in my opinion. I'm most likely going to return this charger because it's not giving me the results that I wanted. I mean, I don't know yet, but we'll see if there's any updates or something down the line. And speaking of updates, this does not come with Android 15. I'm not really sure why, but I have been on Android 14 with the Ogla security updates. This is also powered by the Tensor G4 chip that is responsible for a lot of the AI features within this phone. And from previous videos, there is that debate of it being weaker than the Snapdragon or even the A17 Pro from the iPhone. All that is immaterial because it doesn't talk about the user experience, which is great. Like the Tensor G4 on the Pixel 9 Pro XL is really good for all my primary functions. Scrolling through different apps, the animations, opening apps amongst other things. We can talk about Tensor and how it isn't good, but you have to give credit to Google for wanting to do their own thing, their own way in their own time. You know, making their own ecosystem that runs really well also giving us 16 gigs of RAM now, which is also significant to why that AI uh, aspect of the phone is so good. And speaking of, Gemini Nano is here, is improved. It is yet to replace the Google Assistant, so I'm not really sure what they're doing with that. But it has a new feature called Gemini Live, which gives users the option to talk to it like a normal human being, just like I'm talking to you guys right now. You can ask it questions, ask it solutions, and all that good stuff. For now, it's really good, but it can only get better in the future, and I can't wait to see what they have in store. Other more down-to-earth AI features within the Pixel 9 Pro XL is the Pixel Studio. And with this, you can then create images, illustrations using text prompts, and it is done on your device with or without a connection and takes about four seconds, which is really good. Magic Editor also has a new feature called Reimagine, where you use text prompts to visually change what is in your picture slightly or even drastically. And last but certainly not the least, we have the best feature they released and that is called Add Me. You take a picture, you hand it over to your friend and you step into the same place. Then the Pixel has an AR overlay to guide your framing and it looks like, you know, you guys took the same picture at the same time. In the last month, if I'm being completely honest, I haven't used any of these features. The Pixel Studio, I haven't opened it. Uh, Pixel Screenshots, haven't opened it. I haven't used Add Me. I haven't used the reimagining feature. I basically haven't used any of the new AI features. It is still early days. It's about three weeks to a month since this came out, but it just goes to show that, you know, your phone has a lot of AI features, but it might not really pertain to what people actually want. But what do we want? I have no idea, but this one right here is not it. And while offering seven years of software updates is pretty good, how future-proof is the Pixel 9 Pro and Tensor going to be in the next coming years? How would the performance be in three to four years? We don't know. We can only just hope that the Pixel 9 Pro XL will still be good when that time period comes through. All right, let's dive into the cameras and the 9 Pro XL's front facing camera is now 42 megapixels and at the back we have the same cameras that were on the Pixel 8 Pro and that is a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, a 48 megapixel ultra wide and a telephoto lens at the same time. Same specs from last year. Until this day, I believe the Pixels are the best cameras to take pictures with, especially if you're a black person or you're a person of color. Real tone is a feature from Google that is ever still present. This helps with getting my exact skin tone when I'm outside. So I can easily just point and shoot and not have to worry about how I look. It also goes without saying that the Pixel phones are the easiest to use in any settings. At night or during the day, you don't really need to think about the angles or the lighting conditions because the image processing software does most of the work, which is a gift and a curse at the same time. And I'll explain. The ultra wide lens is pretty good and adds a bit more depth than last year. And when it comes to the video, this is where the curse from the gift comes in. Now the video on the Pixel 9 Pro XL shoots in 8K when you turn on video boost, which is great in theory, but in reality, it's not the most practical because not many people remember to use video boost. I basically don't remember to use video boost. I have to like record, look at it and remember, oh yeah, I have video boost that I can use. Apart from that, it takes about 30 minutes or an hour to process my video from the cloud and back to my phone. 
This was my biggest complaint with the Pixel A Pro. Just like its performance, it's using software to supplement its shortcomings. I felt this way when I unboxed this phone and I feel this way almost a month later. And don't get me wrong, Video Boost actually helps your videos look better, but I just believe that Google should use hardware to solve this video problem than software. So when it's all said and done, every phone has its flaws, some bigger than others. And I think the 9 Pro XL does not have a lot of them. The build quality has improved and it feels like a proper flagship phone. The display is one of the best in the industry right now with the bright screen and an upgraded fingerprint sensor. The battery life, the cameras and the software experience is really up there in terms of a user experience. This is without a doubt a great phone. And I know there is the whole Team Pixel fiasco some people might be scared to say how they really feel, even if they like the phone, but I don't care. I'm not a Team Pixel and I can say whatever the hell I want. So I highly recommend the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Thank you guys for watching. What are your thoughts on the Pixel 9 Pro XL? Comment down below. Make sure you also like and subscribe to the channel as this helps me go a long way. My name is KJ and I'll catch you guys in the next one.